sometimes go ahead. Luciano. And don't try to keep it on yourself. Quick, quick. Half a century ago, a groundbreaking film emerged that left an indelible mark on cinema, propelling its director, Robert Altman, to legendary status. This movie, titled MASH, also turned its stars, Donald Sutherland, Elliot Gould, and Sally Kellerman, into enduring icons. This classic black comedy, set in a mobile army surgical hospital during the Korean War, resonated with audiences and critics alike, becoming a testament to Altman's filmmaking prowess. The film's enduring impact transcended the silver screen, even inspiring a successful television series. To this day, MASH remains a captivating exploration of war and camaraderie, weaving a vibrant tapestry of humor and drama. Let's step into the world of this timeless masterpiece and appreciate its contributions to the annals of cinematic history. Ma'am, as Sky Pilot, you have got to get him out of our tent. Your tent? Yeah, get that. MASH is often overshadowed by the popular television series it inspired, but the film truly set a new standard for what studios should produce. This classic, released in 1970, was a rebellious landmark in filmmaking and a great black comedy about war. The movie, based on a 1968 book by Richard Hooker, entitled MASH, a novel about three army doctors, depicts a unit of medical personnel stationed at a mobile army surgical hospital during the Korean War. This is where the term MASH comes from. The film's groundbreaking approach to storytelling and its irreverent humor resonated with audiences who were growing weary of the traditional, sanitized portrayals of war in cinema. MASH dared to show the raw, chaotic, and often absurd reality of war, and it did so with a sharp wit and biting satire that was both entertaining and thought-provoking. The film's impact on the industry was immediate and significant. Studios took notice of the film's success and began to produce more mature, sophisticated, and challenging films that pushed the boundaries of what was considered acceptable in mainstream cinema. MASH paved the way for a new generation of filmmakers who were not afraid to tackle controversial subjects and to tell stories that were both relevant and meaningful to their audiences. In addition to its impact on the film industry, MASH also left a lasting legacy in popular culture. The film's memorable characters, iconic scenes, and unforgettable dialogue have become a part of our collective consciousness and its themes and messages continue to resonate with audiences today. In conclusion, MASH was a groundbreaking film that set a new standard for what studios should produce and left a lasting impact on the film industry and popular culture. Its irreverent humor, raw portrayal of war, and memorable characters have made it a classic that continues to be celebrated and enjoyed by audiences today. Go ahead, go down. Robert Altman, a director whose work I greatly admire, was a relatively new filmmaker during the time of MASH's creation. Despite his lack of established credentials, he was known for turning down work rather than creating subpar products. This was especially notable during the height of America's involvement in Vietnam, as 20th Century Fox was concerned that audiences would not understand that the film took place during the Korean War. To address these concerns, Altman added a caption at the beginning of the film to clarify the setting. Additionally, Pennsylvania announcements throughout the film serve the same purpose. It's interesting to note that despite these measures, some viewers still mistakenly believe that MASH takes place in Vietnam. Overall, Altman's unorthodox filmmaking process paid off, as MASH became a classic of its time and continues to be celebrated today. The film's unique blend of comedy and drama set against the backdrop of war resonated with audiences and has left a lasting impact on the world of cinema. MASH was a groundbreaking film when it was released in 1970. The movie, directed by Robert Altman, became a massive hit and is still remembered for its humor, satire, and anti-war message. The film's success led to the creation of the beloved TV series that ran for an impressive 11 seasons from 1972 to 1983. The show, also called MASH, was a continuation of the film's story and followed a team of medical personnel during the Korean War. The series became one of the most popular and enduring shows in television history, with a loyal fan base that spans generations. This classic show is known for its memorable characters, sharp writing, and ability to tackle serious issues with humor and sensitivity. The series was set in a mobile army surgical hospital, or MASH unit, and focused on the daily lives of the doctors, nurses, and support staff. 
The show's characters were well-developed and relatable, making it easy for viewers to become invested in their stories. One of the reasons for the show's longevity is its ability to be watched over and over again. Each episode is filled with humor, drama, and emotional moments that resonate with viewers. The show's themes of friendship, loyalty, and perseverance in the face of adversity have made it a timeless classic. The series also had a significant cultural impact, with many of its episodes addressing social and political issues of the time. The show tackled topics such as racism, sexism, and the Vietnam War, making it more than just a comedy show. The series was able to balance these serious topics with humor, making it accessible to a wide audience. In conclusion, MASH was a mega-hit film that spawned a beloved TV series that ran for over a decade. The show's memorable characters, sharp writing, and ability to tackle serious issues with humor and sensitivity have made it a timeless classic. Its cultural impact is still felt today, and the show remains one of the most beloved and enduring shows in television history. <clears throat> Well. Robert Altman, the director of the groundbreaking 1970 film MASH, had a complicated relationship with the television series it inspired. Despite the show's massive success and its role in cementing Altman's reputation as a talented filmmaker, he never warmed up to it. In fact, he admitted to never having watched a full episode all the way through. Altman's disdain for the show may be surprising to some, as he was the one who brought the story to the big screen and helped create the tone and style that the TV series would later adopt. However, it's important to remember that the movie and the show are two distinct entities with different creative teams and artistic visions. It's unclear why Altman didn't like the show, but some have speculated that it may have been due to creative differences or a sense of ownership over the material. After all, Altman was the one who took a chance on the dark comedy about a mobile army surgical hospital during the Korean War, and he may have felt that the TV series didn't do justice to his original vision. Despite Altman's reservations, the MASH TV series became a cultural phenomenon in its own right, running for 11 seasons and winning numerous awards. It tackled serious issues such as war, death, and mental health with humor and nuance, and its impact can still be felt today. In the end, it's up to each viewer to decide which version of MASH they prefer. Whether you're a fan of the movie or the show, there's no denying that Altman's contribution to this classic franchise was instrumental in its success. It's just a shame that he didn't share the same enthusiasm for it as so many others did. Martini, I, I would be, I'd love a martini. Oh, John, give the gentleman a mark. When studio executives first saw this classic, they handed the director 10 pages of notes for cuts and changes. However, a screen test arranged by the producer in San Francisco turned the tide. As the character Hawkeye was stealing the Jeep, the audience openly applauded the film. This response led the studio executives to tear up their notes about the changes they wanted. The film's irreverent humor and anti-war message resonated with audiences, making it a surprise hit and a lasting cultural touchstone. The success of MASH on the big screen even led to a successful television series, further solidifying its place in pop culture history. Despite initial reservations, the film's unique vision and bold storytelling ultimately won over both audiences and studio executives. Its enduring legacy is a testament to the power of a good screen test and the importance of trusting a director's vision. Who knows what gems might have been lost if the executives had insisted on their changes. Adventure pictures. May I leave now, Major? Sure, Hoja. You have fun, yeah? In the early 1970s, Robert Altman, a director with limited feature film experience, had his sights set on a particular movie, the movie that would later become the classic MASH. Altman's enthusiasm and determination were clear to his agent, George Lido, who became his biggest advocate. Lido lobbied hard for Altman to get the job, but the producers were hesitant. They approached other directors, including Sidney Lumet and Stanley Kubrick, but neither was interested. In the end, Altman landed the movie by default. No one else wanted it. Despite the producer's initial doubts, Altman's unique vision and determination shone through, resulting in a film that would become a cultural touchstone. Altman's interest in the project was evident from the start. He had read the novel by Richard Hooker and saw the potential for a film adaptation that would capture the dark humor and absurdity of the Korean War setting. Although the producers were skeptical, Altman's persistence paid off, and he was given the opportunity to direct the movie. Altman's approach to the film was unconventional, to say the least. 
he used multiple cameras and encouraged improvisation from the actors, resulting in a film that was raw and spontaneous. The movie's irreverent tone and anti-war message resonated with audiences, and M.A.S.H. became a surprise hit. Altman's determination to direct M.A.S.H. paid off in a big way. The film was a critical and commercial success, earning Altman his first Academy Award nomination for Best Director. The movie's impact was far-reaching, inspiring a successful television series and cementing Altman's reputation as a visionary filmmaker. In the end, Altman's persistence and unique vision were the keys to his success in directing M.A.S.H. Despite the producer's initial doubts, Altman's determination to bring his vision to life resulted in a film that has stood the test of time and remains a classic to this day. In the making of the 1970 film M.A.S.H., director Robert Altman was known for fighting for what he wanted and often coming out on top. However, there was one area where he didn't succeed, the casting of Father Mulcahy. Altman had his sights set on a real-life Irish priest for the role, but the producer had other ideas, according to actor and writer Malachi McCourt. Altman had originally wanted him for the part of Father Mulcahy, but the producer didn't agree with Altman's choice, and the role ultimately went to René Aubergenois. Despite Altman's best efforts, he was unable to secure the casting of a real-life Irish priest for the part. It's interesting to consider how the film might have been different with McCourt in the role of Father Mulcahy. His real-life experience as a priest certainly would have brought an authenticity to the character. However, Aubergenois' portrayal of the character has become iconic in its own right and is widely beloved by fans of the film. In the end, while Altman may not have gotten his way with the casting of Father Mulcahy, he was still able to create a truly classic film that has resonated with audiences for decades. The movie's impact has transcended its original release, and it continues to be a beloved piece of cinema history. I have anything to do tonight. I just got into town and, uh, well... The music in M.A.S.H. is one of its most memorable aspects, with the theme song Suicide is Painless being particularly iconic. What's interesting is that the lyrics to this song were written by the 14-year-old son of the movie's director, Robert Altman. Mike Altman penned the words as a school assignment, and his father later included the song in the film. Due to its inclusion in the television series that followed the movie, Mike Altman continued to receive residuals throughout its run and syndication. While Robert Altman was paid $75,000 for directing the original movie, his son eventually made approximately $2 million in royalties from the theme song. This is quite a substantial sum for a teenager, and the payments continue to this day. It's fascinating to think that a simple school assignment turned into a lucrative opportunity for a young boy. The song's inclusion in the movie and subsequent television series has left a lasting impact on popular culture, and it remains a memorable part of this classic film. Oh, I don't think I'd eat half that Roger game. You want any of this? No, thank you, sir, but I could. In the creation of the song for MASH, Robert Altman, the director, initially tried to write the lyrics himself. He had a very specific vision in mind, a song that was stupid, nonsensical, and just plain dumb. However, Altman found it challenging to write the lyrics in a way that met his criteria. Out of frustration, Altman turned to an unlikely source for help, his 14-year-old son. The director's son sat down and wrote the lyrics in about five minutes, never expecting to be paid for his efforts since he was the director's child. To everyone's surprise, the song turned out to be a perfect fit for the film's tone and style. The song, which was called Suicide is Painless, became a memorable part of M.A.S.H. and added to the film's overall charm and humor. The fact that the lyrics were written by a teenager added to the song's uniqueness and made it even more endearing to fans of the movie. In the end, the song became one of the most iconic and memorable aspects of M.A.S.H., and it was all thanks to the director's son, who was able to write the stupid and nonsensical lyrics that his father had been struggling to create. Back home, I told you before. You know what I mean? In the 1970 movie MASH, the operating room scenes were almost left on the cutting room floor. These intense and graphic sequences, which capture the raw reality of war, were nearly edited out due to their explicit nature. However, fate intervened when two women visiting the set had a chance encounter with the producers. These women, caught up in the gripping authenticity of the operating room scenes, expressed their admiration for the realism. They argued that these intense moments were what made the movie truly great and that they should be preserved. The producers took their advice to heart, 
deciding to keep the operating room scenes intact and unedited. The decision to maintain the graphic nature of the operating room scenes was a bold one, and it paid off. These sequences added a layer of intensity and urgency to the film, highlighting the stark realities of war and the sacrifices made by those on the front lines. Today, the operating room scenes in MASH are remembered as some of the most powerful and impactful moments in the movie. They serve as a reminder of the importance of authenticity and realism in storytelling and of the power of film to transport us to new and challenging worlds. While working on the 1970 film MASH, director Robert Altman and editor Danford B. Green had a run-in with the head of post-production from the studio. Known for having nude pinups on the walls of their editing room, they were confronted by the studio executive who tried to stop Altman from using the editing machine, as he wasn't a designated -er. In response, Altman forcefully threw him out of the editing room. The very next day, a memo came down from 20th Century Fox's front office, announcing a new policy that there were to be no pinups on the walls of the editing rooms. Altman, known for his rebellious spirit, took this memo to the sound recording studio and added it in to the loudspeaker announcements that were shown during the film. This clever act of defiance served as a subtle way to get back at the studio heads. This anecdote is a testament to Altman's determination and refusal to be silenced or controlled by the studio system. His actions, while unconventional, helped to shape the final product of MASH into the classic that it is today. Hospital. Which hospital? Back home. Is there some reason? During the filming of MASH in 1970, the crew, including actor Alan Alda, felt like they had more freedom than they should have. This was because the officials at 20th Century Fox were preoccupied with their two other expensive war films, Patton and Tora. Tora! 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 It's interesting to note that all three of these films turned out to be critical and box office successes. Alda later stated that he was able to get away with a lot more than he expected during the production of this classic. The film's lighthearted and irreverent tone, combined with its critical view of war, resonated with audiences and critics alike. MASH follows a team of mobile army surgical hospital personnel during the Korean War. The film's blend of humor and drama, as well as its anti-war message, struck a chord with audiences and helped it become a cultural phenomenon. The film's success can be attributed to its talented cast and crew, as well as its timely subject matter. The crew's belief that they were able to get away with more during filming may have contributed to the film's unique and groundbreaking tone. Despite the distractions at the studio, MASH emerged as a critical and commercial success. Its impact on popular culture can still be felt today, with the film's enduring legacy inspiring a successful television series and countless other adaptations. The film's ability to balance humor and drama while also delivering a powerful anti-war message, continues to resonate with audiences to this day. Back. Can you hold it with two fingers, dude? Hell, where the hell did you see it? In the casting process for MASH, Robert Altman initially had James Garner in mind for the role of Hawkeye. However, Donald Sutherland was so determined to play this character that he vigorously campaigned for the part. Interestingly, Garner himself was a veteran of the Korean War, having been wounded and treated in a military hospital during the conflict. Ultimately, Sutherland's persistence paid off, and he was cast as Hawkeye in this classic film. This change in casting brought a fresh dynamic to the character and significantly contributed to the movie's success. The intense dedication of actors like Sutherland often plays a pivotal role in shaping the final outcome of a film, as they breathe life into the characters they portray. The officers will report for short arm inspection at 0400. In the infamous shower scene of MASH, the character Hot Lips, played by Sally Kellerman, becomes the target of an officer's prank. The scene's purpose is to catch a glimpse of Hot Lips in the shower, and the directors employ various distractions to keep Kellerman from evading their gaze. Initially, Kellerman struggled to remain in the shot long enough, often ducking before the crucial moment. To remedy this, director Robert Altman devised distractions to keep her engaged. In the first take, he placed Gary Berghoff, who plays Radar, stark naked in front of Kellerman. In the very next take, Tamar Horrocks, who plays a well-endowed nurse, stood there without her shirt on. These distractions proved effective, allowing Kellerman to linger in the shot long enough before she finally succumbed to the ground. It's worth noting that this was Kellerman's first time appearing nude on screen, and the experience was undoubtedly nerve-wracking for her. 
However, with Altman's clever distractions, the scene was ultimately captured as intended, contributing to the film's enduring legacy. This classic shower scene remains a memorable moment in M.A.S.H., showcasing the lengths to which the characters will go for a laugh, even in the midst of war. No, not with anyone beyond the age of eight years old, I have. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. During the filming of M.A.S.H., two of the lead actors, Donald Sutherland and Elliot Gould, became increasingly frustrated with the directorial style of Robert Altman. The duo was so concerned about the movie's outcome that they decided to take action. They approached the head of production to demand that Altman be fired, fearing that the film would be a disaster at the box office and potentially ruin their careers. However, the studio head reassured them, sharing that the movie would only be shown in a few drive-ins across the country and would not reach a wide audience. This revelation came as a surprise to Gould, who later confessed this information to Altman. To Gould's astonishment, Altman laughed it off and took it in stride, and they continued to work together on other projects. Despite the initial tension, MASH went on to become a classic film, leaving a lasting impact on audiences and the industry. The movie's unique style and humor set it apart from other films of the time, and its themes continue to resonate with viewers today. The fact that the movie was initially dismissed as a drive-in flick only adds to its intriguing history. When MASH finally hit theaters, it caused quite a stir in military circles. The film's anti-war message was not well received by the brass, who felt it painted the military in a negative light. In an effort to counteract this perceived slight, the military decided to take action. Instead of banning the film outright, they chose to run a different movie the following week, one that they felt was more in line with their values. That film was Patton, a war epic that celebrated the life and achievements of General George S. Patton. By scheduling Patton immediately after MASH, the military hoped to send a message that they were not opposed to all war films, just those that criticized their institutions and practices. Patton was seen as a more traditional and patriotic portrayal of military life and one that would be more palatable to military audiences. Of course, not everyone agreed with this approach. Some felt that the military was being heavy-handed and trying to suppress free speech. Others saw it as a missed opportunity to engage in a dialogue about the realities of war and its impact on soldiers. Regardless of one's perspective, there's no denying that the military's reaction to MASH was significant. It highlighted the ongoing tension between the military and the entertainment industry and the challenges of balancing artistic freedom with military values. At its core, MASH was a film that challenged audiences to think critically about war and its consequences. While the military may have taken issue with its message, there's no denying that it struck a chord with audiences around the world. And in the end, that's what makes it such a classic. And our commander-in-chief in Washington, D.C. Frank, were you on this religious kick at home or did you crack up over here? In the movie MASH, set on the front lines of the Korean War, the sound of gunshots is surprisingly absent throughout the entire film, with one notable exception. The only gunshots that audiences hear are from the referee's pistol during the intercamp football game. This creative choice by the film's director, Robert Altman, adds an interesting layer to the film's portrayal of war. The film focuses on the daily lives of the medical personnel in the Mobile Army Surgical Hospital Unit, and the soundscape is dominated by the sounds of the operating room, the banter between the characters, and the occasional explosion in the distance. The absence of gunshots creates a sense of detachment from the violence of war, highlighting the tragic absurdity of the situation. The use of the referee's pistol during the football game is a clever way to incorporate the sound of gunshots, while still maintaining the film's tone. The scene is played for laughs, with the referee firing his pistol to signal the start and end of the game. The use of gunshots in this context serves to underscore the contrast between the deadly seriousness of war and the triviality of the football game. Overall, the creative use of sound in MASH adds depth and nuance to the film's portrayal of the Korean War. By excluding the sound of gunshots in all but one scene, the film emphasizes the tragic absurdity of war and the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Some more